as we begin our celebration, let us come with faithful and repentant hearts that we may please the Lord. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Joseph Diao. Uh, please stand. Our opening song is number 525, Christ in Me Arise, 525. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us enter in this celebration of the third Sunday of Lent by first acknowledging our fault and submit ourselves to receive the graces of the Lord from this Eucharist. We will pray today for Peter Murphy, Luisa Palarca, Hermogenes Elisalde, and thanksgiving for Joe and Amy Laguda. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, praying, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience, may always be lifted up by your mercy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. 
Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. Leading the flocks across the desert, he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, an angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in fire, flaming out of a bush. As he looked on, he was surprised to see that the bush through the fire was not consumed. So Moses decided, I must go over to look at this remarkable sight and see why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw him coming over to look at it more closely, God called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, he answered, here I am. God said, come no nearer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. I'm the God of your fathers, he continued, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look at God. But the Lord says, I have witnessed the affliction of my people in Egypt and have heard their cry of complaint against their slave drivers. So I know well what they are suffering. Therefore, I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and lead them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses said to God, but when I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, if they ask me, what is his name? What am I to tell them? God replied, I am who am. Then he added, this is what you should tell the Israelites. I am sent me to you. God spoke further to Moses. Thus shall you say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. Thus am I to be remembered through all generations. The word of the Lord. He 
pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord secures justice and the rights of the oppressed. He has made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to the children of Israel. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness towards those who fear him. The Lord is kind and A reading of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and all of them were baptized in Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from a spiritual rock that followed them, and the flock and the rock was the Christ. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, for they were struck down in the desert. These things happened as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil things as they did. Do not grumble as some of them did and suffer death by the destroyer. These things happened to them as an example and they have been written down as a warning to us upon whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, whoever thinks he is standing secure should take care and not fall. The word of the Lord.
the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 people who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it but found none, he said to the gardener, for three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? He said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ. On this Sunday, brothers and sisters, we are summoned by the Lord to give into his hands our prayers and our work and family projects for this coming week. We gathered also to meditate on the word of God for us today and for our journey throughout this Lent season. This Sunday's reading focuses on the fact that we are created and planted on this earth to bear good fruit. In telling the story of the owner of the fig tree planted, Jesus was really talking about us and about God. The story wants to make us understand that God has planted us here on this earth and he expects us to produce fruit, good fruit in our life. What kind of fruit does he expect? When he looks at the way we live our life, he wants to see things like love, joy, peace, patience, perseverance, kindness, gentleness, etc. There are times when he is disappointed in what he sees, but he is always willing to give us another chance. On the other hand, we are taught very clearly with this message, do not be like the fruitless tree. Rather than focus on the gravity of others' transgressions, make sure you are producing good. Instead of assigning causality to others' misfortune, ensure that you are not ignoring your own missing fruit. Jesus' words suggest that tending to one's own life and positively changing one's own mind is the best strategy, strategy to prevent 
or even persevere through unexpected calamity. If one refuses to do that type of work, they are already ruined. Every day, we are bombarded with tragedies that happen throughout our suburbs, cities, and countries. Every day, we question ourselves about the capacities of politicians and people in charge of our security and of our well-being, the well-being of human societies. Every day, stupid conflicts challenge our ability to live together and to move forward for a common and better life. What people from Ukraine are facing now is the proof, the proof that when human beings think that they have advanced in many ways, they are just more likely to step back than to live a good human civilization. But what this gospel page emphasizes is also that our human tragedies show that life is fragile and that we must get right with us and with God. God who in reality leaves us with our freedom and sense of responsibility. And about the good and the bad, it is always part of our way of provoking peace and harmony or playing the game of the evil. Look, when tragedy hits someone else, whether it is a tragedy caused by evil people or one caused by some natural disaster, we all talk about it. We are glued on the TV set, watching the details over and over as they are reported. But when it is over, most people go on unchanged with no thought of how it applies to them. Jesus here shows that we should immediately take it to heart by asking, what if it had been me? Would I have been ready to stand before God? Have I truly repented of my sins, of my false ideologies, of my I don't care about the others? Is my life really pleasing to the Lord? Because the fact is, sooner or later, it can be me. Yes. The point is, life is very fragile. Even though you are healthy and young, it can finish now, today, your life. And because we are all blunders and sinners, we have one pressing need that is to get right with God today before we perish too. So the goal of this liturgy is a transformation from each one of us before being able to transform our, our environment. We never have to forget that for us Christians, every person who has ever lived on this planet was created by a good and merciful God for his purpose, which is to bring glory to him. Every person breathes God's air, drinks God's water, eats God's food, and partakes of the life that God has granted him in his beautiful creation. Yet, how many live only for themselves and their own pleasure, with no regard for God and his glory? So, we do not have to disregard God's merciful 
warnings of the gospel page. Once again, tragedies are God's gracious reminders that a worse end than a horrible death awaits us if we do not repent the disaster we commit against our spiritual side and even against the climate and the inventions that we do and that destroy us. As they just said in chapter 12, verse 5, quote, I will warn you whom to fear. Be afraid of the one who after killing has the power to cast into Gehenna, into hell. Yes, I tell you, be afraid of that one. Let us then take a lesson from this story and from the principles of the good steward of land and orchard. They teach us to not resist change, to not language, lang language in the fog of scarcity and do not pin for the good old days. On the contrary, we are made to not wasting the soil, our soil. We are made to invest fully in flourishing figs, meaning acts of love, patience, openness, gentleness, and service for others. In summary, we are made to step up the discipleship faith practices and fertilize the folks, knowing that there is a big world out there that needs God's love. So let us go and bloom in the image of Christ. Amen. Let us take the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting that the Lord is kind and merciful, we offer God our prayers and petitions. For the church, that it continue to provide strong moral leadership, <clears throat> guidance and inspiration during these days of chaos and danger, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they may unselfishly pursue the goal of averting nuclear war and ecological catastrophe, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering from the devastation of military violence and civil war, especially the peoples of Ukraine, Myanmar, and Yemen, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elect, preparing to receive the living waters of Christ this Easter, that they learn to scorn false values and that fail to quench their spiritual thirst. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all those struggling with mental, emotional, and physical illness, especially Claude de Silva, that they find comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have recently died, that our Lord grant them peace and comfort, those mourning their loss, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered for the people of the parish and each one of you, and in thanksgiving by, by Joe and Amy Laguda, and for the repose of the souls of Peter Murphy, Louisa Palarca, and Hermonogenes uh, Elizaldi. for the silent, heartfelt prayers of each person here. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all generosity, hear the pray these prayers, responding to them according to your will and for your greater glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 397. These alone are enough. Number 397.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self-denial self -denial should give you thanks, humbled our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so... We glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope. Salvatore Joseph, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on the sick. Have mercy on us all. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to become heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion song is number 505, as the dear long 505. Let us pray.